What is otherwise a perfectly good daily driver can have subtle undertones of sportiness. This heat trap is definitely something that needs to be improved in terms of cooling this thermally hot engine. You know, if you just drive it normally, it's, it's fine. What are some things you can do to reduce the thermal craziness that happens in this car. So there are built-in thermal protections in the car, just, you know, as a daily driver, if you're gonna pass those points, you can start thinking about active and passive cooling modifications to your car. As anyone with a CVT knows, those things are the first things to show any signs of heat. They call it limp mode when the engine realizes the transmission is a little too hot, the fluid inside, and it'll kind of go into this self-protect mode. And that self-protect mode shows itself by limiting the CVT's maximum RPM to around 4,000. The first time it happened to me was when I was driving to, to Death Valley. And from Southern California, driving to Death Valley, you have to go over a mountain pass. You know, and I had three people in my car and a bunch of cargo in the back. We had the air conditioning blasting. And you know, there's a bunch of people on this this road. I think it was a two lane. And climbing the, the long, long hill, it, it put a toll on the engine, especially because I was trying to pass people going uphill on this little yeah. thing. But that's when the CVT told me, hey, I can't, I can't take all this heat. And, you know, it was a hundred and something degrees outside trying to pass people uphill. That's just a recipe for heat, right? So then that was the first time this car went into limp mode. I really thought, I didn't think we were going to die. I just thought, hey, I suddenly lost power. I can't climb anymore at that speed. So, you know, I... I just let it drive in automatic after that. And um, it was fine. It just needed to cool down. This this has a CVT. So if you are going to be driving a little bit more, you know, in the higher RPMs with higher loads, do invest in a transmission cooler or a CVT cooler. They're the same thing. You can get stacked plate, um, radiator fins, uh, and they're just transmission coolers that you can add um, inline or a bypass method for the CVT. And what that means is you either bypass the OEM CVT cooler or you inline it with the CVT cooler. After that, you know, after I've installed that, like you have to add some fluid, there's extra fluid, there's extra capacity. I think it's like a, a quart and a bit more uh, fluid. And what that does is it helps cool the CVT fluid, bringing it in front of the radiator, and when the car is moving, uh, air passes through that cooler, reduces the heat inside of the transmission. That fluid is pumped back into the CVT a little bit cooler than it was when it was in there. For the most part, that's the mod that you're going to want to do if you're going to be driving like hard. So the other thing that you can do, especially in pe where people live in very hot climates, is um, add a little bit of thermal protection in your engine with a little bit heavier weight oil. Typically, the FB20 in North America, parts of Europe, and Canada get a zero weight 20 rating. In other global markets, more tropical places, closer to the equator, uh, Subaru specs these things with uh, 5W30. And I've even heard some people using 5W40. So that's just better thermal protection for hotter climates. And I think you'll notice a little bit, you know, better performance out of a car during hot days uh, with heavier fluid. Here's one that I had to add because I have aftermarket headers. The aftermarket headers in this car do not come with heat shielding 
uh, down below. So I added a thermal blanket to the top of the header and I saw like 30, 30 to 40 degrees Celsius differences in temperatures. And I think, you know, with, you know, how heat works where it radiates upwards, um, if it's underneath the engine, it's just going to heat up the bottom of the engine and the entire engine is just going to get hot. So when you have that thermal blanket slash a heat barrier, it can reduce the in-engine bay temperatures. And that's really good for reducing heat soak. And before that, I found that that thing down there, that's a heat shield on top of the secondary catalytic converter. When I added that thing, that was also a good thing to keep the side of the transmission casing cooler from uh, hot exhaust gases in that pipe. One of my favorites is this uh, passive cooling modification, like letting air out of the engine bay passively. And I've uh, removed or slid over part of the weather shielding there uh, just to let some hot air kind of evacuate you know, right at the edge of this um, this roof lid here. It's it's passive, but you know, if you unblock the trapped air, it's got to go somewhere. So, I saw uh, maybe a difference about like six degrees coming off of here versus like here. So, you know, it's, it works passively. I like passive mods because, you know, like in RPGs, it's like self healing. <laughs> Um, a more active modification is the throttle body coolant bypass. And I have an entire video on that one. It reduces the amount of coolant, which is actually heated, heated fluid, going through the throttle body, thus reducing the overall intake temperatures, um, at least at the beginning of the run, right? Once the car gets heat soaked, guys, there's not much you can do. You know, there are things you can do, but they, they're a lot more involved. So anyway, throttle body coolant bypass, really good one, um, especially for those people in hot climates that don't need their throttle body to be warmed up in case you have like that crazy ice storm that might freeze up your throttle body. Okay, these are semi-passive as well. Uh, an air oil separator is basically a condenser can that allows uh, cooling of some of the PCV system, the positive crankcase ventilation, and it cools the air coming out of the crankcase that would usually go directly into the manifold uh, by swirling it in this pot, separating any oil, and then pushing cleaner air into this um, intake manifold to be later burned in the cylinders. That's passive i mean this thing actually gets pretty warm uh, if you touch it so. 60 there's some air here cools off a little bit i have a breather catch can this thing does get pretty warm uh, there's hot air gases that come out through here and pass through here and go back into the intake pipe uh, this is a filter for that intake pipe so that your throttle body doesn't get all gummed up uh, and it also acts as a semi-passive cooling um, area there in the old days with aluminum blocks like the heads and then aluminum intake manifolds when those two parts were connected a lot of the heat from the engine block would rise up uh, through conductivity and convection into the intake manifold and thus getting the entire intake track really hot uh, subaru for the past you know few years has moved to a plastic intake manifold so that conductivity and um, convection uh, affects the intake manifold a lot less. But these uh, intake risers um, add more volume to that intake manifold for you know changing the harmonics of the engine and its intake. So I wouldn't say that's a, a cooling mod, but it's a cool mod. And for you hardcore track people who uh, really push your car, uh, the engine oil cooler uh, would also be a really good cooling mod modification for this car. Typically, it would be connected here, uh, either with a heat sink there or with some sort of 
um, piping or tubing uh, running down to a, you know, some sort of grill mounted, fender mounted, wherever you want to mount your oil cooler. Sometimes people are putting them on the top of their cars with, um, if they want to have the WRX hood modification, right? That's actually an active scoop for, for cooling. So oil coolers, I haven't needed one. Um, my oil, even on the hottest days, does not exceed 250, 240 something. And uh, the radiator is in its nice crispy zone, right, like 212. And it always brings the, the oil back down to where it needs to be. Um, I think if it was a prolonged session, like more than, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes at a time, you know, even 30 minute track sessions, then the oil and everything would get really hot. And I think the radiator would, would be struggling at that point. But for the stuff that I do, like sprinting, it's not, it's not needed, but I think it's definitely a good cooling mod. It'd probably bring the overall temperatures of the engine down at least like 10 degrees. There's also a modification that I have not done, which is the lower thermostat modification where you switch out the OEM thermostat, which turns on the radiators at a certain temperature uh, and turns on the fans. You can have a thermostat that switches on a little bit earlier um, and therefore it catches any like sudden bursts in oil and motor temperature rises. Uh, and you know, I don't think it's needed. Again, my oil never really gets overly hot. It's really my transmission and my exhaust that get this entire engine bay really hot. When that MAF sensor starts getting detecting that the intake and engine air temperatures are really hot, it will pull timing and your car will just start feeling slow. So anything to keep that sensor or the other temperature sensors in the car cool, you're, you're winning.